Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
whether that's in person or perhaps uh, if you're joining us online. Something that's really helpful to us is if one way or another, you could let us know that you're here. There's a QR code, uh, if that's your thing, on the back of the bulletin. Or uh, we have these connection cards. You could fill one of those out. And then as we pass around the offering plate, hand that over to us and it lets us know who's, uh, who's around, who's not around, who has uh, special concerns or joys we ought to be following up on during the week. Also, if you're new or just if you haven't been with us in a while, we wanna make sure you have uh, what you need to uh, when it comes to the time of our service where we remember the Lord's supper. Uh, so you should have gotten a cup with a gluten-free cracker and a grape. If you miss that, uh, now's a good time to, to go back and grab one. We are glad to have Shanna back after three weeks away. We, uh, today, we're continuing a sermon series we've been doing uh, about our mission statement, true community, deep Christian spirituality, passion for justice. And then in July, we're going to be looking forward to a new series. It's called Imagine the World with More. And we actually have a video to show you to that end. Yeah. <laughs> 
Pretty slick, yeah. Uh, before we get to uh, looking ahead to a uh, couple announcements, things happening in the life of this church. Uh, on this Father's Day, we'd like to invite you to bring your whole self into this space today. Uh, bring your joy and thankfulness and bring your mixed feelings and bring your hurts and your disappointments. Uh, whatever experiences you may bring into this time, it's our hope that as you leave, you'll find that you are carrying a little bit more love with you uh, than when you entered into the church this morning. We have a few announcements to uh, lift up on the life of this congregation. Uh, First week, we have our art table that has returned. It's in the back. So if you find art to be meditative and helpful as you are listening and uh, recognizing this God spirit in this place and outside, uh, I invite you to utilize some of those resources and supplies. Uh, we want to lift up and thank B.B. Bartholomew uh, for submitting that idea to the program cabinet. It's just that easy. Yes, um, there are a bunch of signups in the entryway on the uh, gingham covered table on our welcome spot. Fun stuff, ways to serve the community. I invite you following the service to check out what you might have missed uh, and ways to get involved. Mike Speeton, who was with Jackson Street, was here a couple of weeks ago. So thank you for your generosity of time and treasure as we support that important work. They are having their annual yard sale this uh, Friday and Saturday at Kanegi Family Farm. So if you have things you would like to donate, um, you can donate them at that location. Don't bring them here. We won't have anything, we won't have a place for them. Um, but if you need help with uh, transporting, uh, Graham has offered very generously to pick up on Wednesday or Thursday morning. The sale will happen on Friday and Saturday. So if you are in the market for some new treasures uh, to support a really great organization, uh, you can go there. All of the details are around the building. Um, or you can ask Graham. So thank you again for your generosity. Ride is this Saturday. And so we want to continue to thank folks who have brought in water and granola bars. We are in really great shape. So thank you for that. Um, there are, we're looking for a few more folks to help with our booth, particularly in the afternoon. The sign up sheet is back in the entry. Uh, and if you are, interested in walking in the march uh well you're invited to gather here at nine wear a purple fcc shirt if you have it if you don't and you want one let us know i can one of us can pull them out of our office um and we'll get you one yes You just want to come and hang out anytime in that during the day. We're going to be on the courthouse side with the lawn. So plenty of shade. Bring a chair. Come hang out. Um, if there are any other uh, questions, please uh, feel free to ask Shanna or contact Shanna. Let us know. Prepare our hearts and minds for worship with a moment of centering silence, a couple of deep breaths, and then by hearing our prelude.
Please rise if you're able. People of God, who do you come to worship? We come to worship the one true God. How will you worship? Not with words alone, but by living lives of justice and love. Come, you who belong to God. Come, you who are foolish in the eyes of the world. Rain of peace or 
Let us pray. O oh Lord, give us an eye for injustice, for it is only when we are able to recognize injustice and feel its awful sting that we will be moved to make things right. O oh Lord, give us a tender heart. Sometimes we are too hard-hearted to recognize when we have been uncaring, unfeeling, or unkind. O oh Lord, grant us the ability to view life from the dust. All our lives we've been taught to make others proud, to be proud of ourselves, to hold our heads high, all the while missing the virtues of being poor in spirit. Teach us, dear Lord, to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you. Amen. You may be seated. All right. So does anyone know what today is? It's a special day. Yeah. yeah? What is today? Today is Father's Day. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what Father's Day is? Do you know what we do on Father's Day? Who do we celebrate on Father's Day? We celebrate our fathers, right? That could be somebody who's a dad or someone in your life who is a teacher, somebody who has led you to learn something about life or brought you to a place that's really fun or an activity. Has anybody done something for you this week, Silas? Have you gone to any place fun this week or did you learn anything this week? Silas, what do you like to do with daddy? You don't know? Do you like to read books with him? Have you gone to the library with dad? Yeah, you went to the library? So a dad can bring us to really fun places where we get to learn things and have a good time. Um, something to remember, though, is that we have a Heavenly Father as well. And that Heavenly Father has promised to love us all of the time, no matter what we do or what happens. And he's made that promise to all of us. He even said that he would be a father to people who don't have dads. And that is something that's really special and we can be grateful for. So if we just want to take a moment, everybody, to be thankful for anyone in your life who's either a dad or somebody who's led you to an activity or taught you something in life, been a mentor towards you, um, and just been a light in your life. So we can just take a moment to pray before we go to the nursery together, okay? Let's have the rest of our service. Thank you, God, our Heavenly Father, for bringing dads into our lives, leaders and mentors who've guided us to the activities of life that we truly love, who've given us time and space to worship and be in community with each other. Uh, who continue to lead us uh, no matter what happens. 
and gives us love for ourselves, for others, and for God, our Heavenly Father. In God's name we pray, amen. And now, do we remember what happens next, Silas? Yeah, can you help me say this next part? You say the peace. Can you help me say it, Silas? Not today. <laughs> so may the, may the peace of Christ be with you. Let's turn and greet each other with Christ's peace. Now let us take a few moments to gather into our hearts and into our thoughts all those in our community whose needs have been made known to us. We remember in prayer Breezy and Cameron, Carol, Jan, Jeff, Les and Deanna, Alan and Nita. We remember Keith, Jay, Anne, Frank, Pam, and Raleigh. Let us pray. The kingdom of God is at hand. You proclaimed it, Jesus, but it often feels like it's so far away. Jesus, you demonstrated the kingdom's grace and showed its power, but the signs often appear faded or absent in our world. We need your kingdom to come, O oh God, in all its fullness, in all its glory. This waiting, this now and not yet experience of your reign is hard and frustrating for us. And so we pray for your kingdom to be revealed in our lives, turning our sickness and sin, our brokenness and fear 
into friendship and compassion, wholeness and joy. We pray for Your Kingdom to be revealed in our neighborhoods, turning our division and suspicion, our judgment and our competition into fellowship and care, compassion and service. We pray for Your Kingdom to be revealed in our world, turning our war and our disparities, our consumption and our self-interest into peace and collaboration, stewardship and reverence. Your Kingdom is here and it is coming, O God. Make us faithful heralds of its message and tireless practitioners of its ways. All this we pray in Jesus' name as we pray with the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Our scripture this morning comes from the prophet Micah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord. And you enduring foundations of the earth, for the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O my people, what have I done to you? In what have I worried you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, and that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Praise the Lord. Micah 6, 8. A well-known verse to many, especially in this congregation. Judy Lindley shared with me a few weeks ago that Ray's email signature included the question and the reminder of what we're called to do. What Micah says, this is it. This is the way. And when we're talking about a passion for justice, we could have used any number of scriptures and we could have used this scripture any of the weeks we could have read it every single week but i'm the planner and so i decided what sunday i wanted to preach this one and what scripture i wanted to preach before jared could and so here we are <laughs> micah 6 verses 1 through 8 I wanted to back up a little bit to the first few verses that Chet read earlier to give a little bit more context. This passage mirrors a courtroom scene where God's people are on trial for failing to live into the covenantal promises that they have made with God. Israel is no more. They are in diaspora. Other uh, empires have come and are living within this promised land and so they're not feeling super great neither is god god asks in this passage more or less what have i done wrong what have i done wrong god says i've done this taken you out of egypt given you different ways to show that I have been present. I have given you different ways throughout history to say, I am with you. I've, God has said, I have lived into these covenantal promises. God's people, not so much. And so after God asks this question and provides God's evidence, the people of God respond, sarcastically densely how should we come before the lord what will make god happy 
They keep saying these more extravagant and ridiculous and dare I say obscene sacrifices. Would this make you happy? What about this? And God responds. It's not material gifts. It's not sacrifices, human or otherwise. God says simply, this is what I want. Justice, kindness, and a humble and active relationship with me. Lisa Davison, in a uh, lecture at the 2019 General Assembly, says, or God wants us to be committed to creating a community in which all are treated as equals, a community and world shaped by God's vision of wholeness and shalom. As Jared mentioned a couple of weeks ago, our mission to be a faithful, growing church that demonstrates true community, deep Christian spirituality, and a passion for justice is a paraphrase of this famous verse. And I'm not going to unpack the first two in depth because Jared has already done that and the internet exists. But it's important to note that in this passage, justice comes first. Dr. Davison also shared in that same lecture that the Hebrew phrase would be better translated as to make justice happen. The Hebrew verb has a forceful sense of making something happen, humans actually creating something new. It's not a passive demand. It can't just happen. It takes effort and intention but it can't be done alone. So, if we're serious about building true community, and I think we are, we must have an eye towards justice. And if we're serious about practicing deep Christian spirituality, that is following the way of Jesus, whom we call Christ, and again, I think we are, our hearts must be tuned to justice. These practices ground us so that we, in turn, can make justice happen. It's not an either-or. It's not a both-and. Jared asked, what would it look like for us to put kindness at the very center of the way we think about and practice community? He also asked, what would it look like if when we're thinking about deep spirituality, we were also thinking about true community. And so I ask, what would it look like if we understood pursuing justice, making justice happen, to be a Christian spiritual practice, to be in solidarity with neighbors, and thus building a true community? What would that look like? What kind of work might that entail? First, I would suggest that we need to recognize our individual inequities and social inequities that exist. Naming those isms that keep us separated from God's design for the world and undermines that vision of wholeness and shalom it's not easy, it's uncomfortable, but it's important to confess our part in perpetuating them and things we've done and left undone. Second, I would say there are elements of reflection and assessment for ourselves and our community, recognizing the tensions within ourselves and among others with the kind of work that justice and charity require. Now, it's those tensions that we sometimes feel when it comes to pursuing a passion for justice. Because it feels easier to care for the immediate needs rather than addressing root causes. It's easier to feed people or put someone up in a hotel for a night or even just look the other way than it is to address root causes of hunger and poverty and homelessness and affordable housing. 
It's easier to care for someone once you know their story rather than someone half a world away. It's easier to respond to tornado or fire relief in the days and weeks after it happens than continuing to check in on the story months and even years later. There's a sense of immediacy and reward. You see the impact. It feels good. And that's something to remember. But justice and charity are not the same. Charity meets those immediate needs. And don't get me wrong, meeting immediate needs is important work. It is a spiritual practice. It should and will continue. But I, and I know I'm not alone here, that it's not actually justice. Because justice works towards ending those needs. Justice work plays the long game. It's the work of generations that takes months, years, decades, lifetimes to enact that lasting change. And we won't see those end results, but that doesn't diminish the work and the contributions we have made and will make. Just one brief example, the Creating Housing Coalition is one that I want to lift up. You know, they had their groundbreaking ceremony last weekend. And in hearing the dream and vision shared among members of this community and the wider community, it's been years in the making. I'll do it if you do it. Imagine what the world might be like six years from now if more folks said that. I'll do it if you do it. Through those tiny home village, that tiny home villages, that village, maybe villages, who knows? Those residents have permanent housing, access to other services that help eliminate the root causes of homelessness and poverty. So when we are living into our passion for justice, we recognize God's presence in the world and God's accompaniment with each of us. When we are living into a passion for justice, we are fulfilling God's call to love kindness. And because we seek community and spirituality, we remember that accepting God's call is to accept risk. But we're not uniform. We are not all the same. And so it is a gentle reminder to recognize that we each have different understandings of risk. What might be too much of a risk for someone is someone else's everyday practice. That's okay. As a community, we travel and we learn together, stretching and growing, knowing that we're dependent on God and one another to make justice happen. What's less okay is for us to dig in our heels because we're right and we know we're right, or become frustrated because other folks move, aren't moving as fast as we'd like. So that arc, that bending of that long universal arc towards justice gets stunted. What's less okay is becoming overwhelmed with the massive systemic injustices that we clam up and we don't do anything. What's less okay is denying our own complicity and privilege within these massively unjust systems and holding on to what little power we have like it's pie because it's more comfortable. What's less okay is withdrawing into the safety of echo chambers where everyone shares your world, same worldview, refusing to engage. So what would it look like to be, a, uh, to be a space as we are working to make justice happen? What would it look like if everyone was safe and if you knew you were safe, but 
everyone was just a little bit uncomfortable. What would it look like if everyone was safe, always, but not always comfortable? What kind of growth and stretching might we be able to accomplish if there was space for that? What kind of dreaming and imagining and daring might we do together to make justice happen? What kind of discernment and learning might we be able to do together if we trusted each other, if we assumed good intentions from one another, and instead of arguing for winners and losers, we took the approach of being curious rather than judgmental. Pursuing a passion of justice is an act of building community. Pursuing a passion for justice is a spiritual practice because true community cannot exist without a just world. Christian spiritual practice is more expansive than active discussion with God or quiet contemplation. To seek justice is to live into the covenantal relationship God has with us as individuals, as a congregation, and as citizens of the world. Making justice happen. It's not just us. So let's go back to that Micah text. God has told you, O mortal, what is good? To do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with God. Hum humility with God. Once again, from that Lisa Davison lecture, humility requires that we confess our ultimate dependence on God and accept that we are not God, thank God, but we are God's image in the world. Another suggestion for this, uh, for this translation, walk humbly with God, to be God's image in the world. And so, if we are God's image in this world, what we do and say is a re direct reflection of God's presence and relationship with the world, and how we express our understanding of God's desire for the world. How, how might the understanding of ourselves and our actions, how might that change? if we really walked around like we were God's image in the world? How do our actions show the kind of God, a God of compassion and mercy, of abundance and liberation? How do our act actions currently show the kind of God, that God we know to be true? Cornell West has this fabulous phrase, Justice is what love looks like in public. Justice is what love looks like in public. So may our love look like justice in public. May our actions celebrate and lift up the transforming, liberating, and limitless love of God in big and small ways. May God's design and desire for our congregation and our world be revealed to us. In our efforts to create true community, may we make justice happen. In our efforts to make justice happen, may we be willing to risk and sacrifice for the work of building true and beloved communities. And may our journeys and our work be grounded and strengthened in spiritual practices that keep us connected to God to one another in that covenantal relationship so that each being God created and called very good may know that in their bones. It's a lot of work. May it be so. Amen. Friends, we are not in this work of doing justice, of loving kindness, and I humble walk with God alone. And so I invite you 
if this is a community of Christ where you would like to deepen our relation, your relationship with God and with this community, to come forward now as we sing our hymn of discipleship, whether it be by an initial confession of faith, yes, Jesus is doing something big in this world and I want to be a part of it, or a reaffirmation of faith, transfer of membership. Let us stand and sing together. Father's Day, and I'm tempted to talk about my father. Uh, but we all have diverse experiences with our parents, and I'd just like to share one thing. I was very lucky. I grew up in a home where I was loved. Now, I didn't always accept everything they taught me but, and everything they wanted me to do, but I always knew I was loved. Can you think of how many in the world grow up without knowing that they're loved? Alice and Jared and wonderful messages have been sharing with us that our ministry is with each other to be supportive in a wonderful community of faith, but it's to reach out and to share with others so that all know that they are loved. And so if we give with our tithes and offerings, and if we serve in ways to show that God's love is for all, then we are following that call. Let us receive our morning offering.
are grateful, O God, for your love, shown so well in your Son, Jesus the Christ, and we commit these offerings to spreading that love and committing our own lives for you to call and show the love for all. Amen. Now we come to a time where we gather around this table. This is not our table. This is Christ's table. All are welcome at this table. All are included, absolutely no exceptions. It is Jesus, the risen Christ, who joins us together as a community of faithful, hopeful believers loving what he loved, living what he taught, and striving to be his faithful servants in our time and this place. So in this meal, we remember Jesus, his promises, and the price he paid for who he was, what he said, and what he did. So on the night before Jesus was betrayed and arrested, he took a loaf of bread and he gave it to he gave thanks to you O oh god and broke it and gave it to his friends saying take and eat this is my body given for you whenever you do this remember me and when the supper was over he took the cup poured it out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin do this as often as you drink it and remember me. Please pray with me. Holy mystery, God the Spirit, we call on you to transform these familiar things as you continually transform the world around us. Bless this bread and this cup, the wheat and the grape, the farmer and the harvest, 
the seed and the sower. So that in the sharing of these simple elements in community, we may taste and see your goodness so that we might catch a glimpse of what it is to be in communion with you and with one another. Amen.
Now, as we conclude our service of worship, hear these words of blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may God look on you with kindness and give you peace. May the love of God, the grace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Now go in peace to love and serve your neighbor, to love and serve our God. For Jesus Christ is Lord. Christ is Lord indeed. Amen. Amen.